This is a more substantial stage than the last, due in part to a very satisfying massacre at the offset, and in part to Mega Man being one of the very few series to realize water is fucking retarded to incorporate unless it somehow makes you more awesome. Now as far as adding to the challenge, this is one of those segments so easy that you need to at least make it look good. So I try not to stop moving unless I have to, and I abuse the fuck out of slopes because, uh, frankly these sorts of petty things amuse me. Kinda like the kids staring into a strobe light everyone at the dance felt sorry for. Speaking of lights, this mini-boss is a pretty entertaining concept. He doesn't have a traditional amount of health. He'll be destroyed when a certain percentage of his many weak points are blown up. Now unless you stand under him and fire off a charged Sonic Slicer, which has to hold a record for the most therapeutic kill in the series, it doesn't really matter how quickly you destroy him. There's a delay on that gate, and past a certain point it takes the same time every time. It's still fun to unload a flurry into the guy though. The lawn underwater hall is basically a playground. There's a very nifty maneuver that the TAS of this game uses where you walk down a slope, jump, and quickly turn yourself around. It's not very useful to a normal speedrun, but hell, I've got nothing but time to kill on this one. The segment's only real challenge lies in the climb near the end, and it's actually pretty fucking annoying. This is exactly what I ranted about in Flame Stag stage earlier, in that your stunted jump combines with enemies to make for a very annoying climb. The hardest part is doing this fast, and taking advantage of the mid-charge shot's alarmingly large hitbox. Finally, we're coming up to Bubblecraft himself, who, uh, basically lives up to the threat factor of his name. I wasn't lying when I called this guy complex. He probably has the most complicated AI and patterns of the bunch, except for one glaring issue. He is incredibly fixated on X's ass and will see fit to try ramming into it every time you jump over the oblivious bastard. I can't really comprehend Capcom's thought process behind this attack, but it sure as shit makes the fight entertaining. The only real annoyance is that he tends to interrupt you by jumping out of nowhere now and then, which throws me off a little towards the end of this. I suppose in Capcom's defense they give this guy a spiked ceiling in the refight, which accomplishes... nothing really, but the thought is there. Next up is... Crystal Snail. I know I should be used to this shit by now, but come on Capcom, you're only 16 bosses in. You couldn't have given us a fucking lion or something? Snails, crabs, beetles, and sponges. Fearmongering 101. Christ. Stay tuned for that.